So I just told everybody how we heard the doorknob and the three knocks. What do you have to say? Probably the wind. Just the front door does that a lot. That doesn't explain the knocks. It sounds like somebody knocked at that door. Really, really quietly. Yes, but I've been hearing that very often. And that was the quietest I've heard it, but I've been hearing it very often. Telling you, there's something fishy about that. What do you think, Boomer? Boomer thinks I should pay more attention to him. Boomer? Boomer? Hey. <laughs> Hi. <coughs> Kitty cam! Kitty cam! You're gonna have to put a GoPro on his back. <laughs> oh my god. This is normally what Betty Faze looks like. This is my favorite cafe. Okay, so we just had a great breakfast over at Betty Faye's and, and Val just fixed her hair in the camera. Yes, I did. See, I like I don't like when my hair is in the back because then I look like I'm bald. So I like having my ponytail hanging off to the side. So but now we are on our way for our two hour massage. Thank you, Kyle. Yes, and maybe this person will help give me where they got me last time, where I'm actually getting to that point, what is it? That completely relaxed zone. For, I got five minutes there last time, so over two hours will be ten minutes of relaxation. She needs it. She yeah. really does. That's I go off to our massage and I can't relax. Go figure. There, see, now you can see my phone. Yes. <laughs> maybe it's just make a big bun on top of your head. No, because then it's like. Oh, there. Okay, how's that? We'll just do that. So, everybody, we just finished <laughs> breakfast at Betty Faye's. <laughs> okay, so we're here. Massage green. Massage green. Two hours of heaven. Heaven. There we go. There, I can see the side better that way. Yay! Two hours of heaven! Ooh. So, here we are. Here we are. Are you ready to listen to me snore? Yes, for two hours, this one may listen to me snore. Well, it's going to take me at least five minutes to fall asleep. This is true. One of these days I'm going to record this, you know that. <laughs> I'm going to record your... But Tim already got me on that one. She got you in bed, but yeah, you am ready to listen to your two hour snore session. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. These are good two-hour snore sessions. Yeah, I'm just, just wondering if I can stop giggling my way through it. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm home alone, which is kind of a good thing. I get to get some things done. Val's off getting a back massage and having lunch with Kaya, and she's getting her out of the house, which is great. We had a, an unfortunate thing this morning. I don't know how to deal with it right now, because I'm the only one who actually knows. Um, I found Simba on the front yard. Apparently he was uh, attacked by a uh, coyote. So uh, Simba's no longer with us. Um, this is going to be kind of tough. Uh, this has been, this is tough on me. Simba was, was pretty much my cat. He started out as, as Megan's. But uh, when he became a teenager, he, uh, they kind of drifted apart. He couldn't stay indoors. He always wanted to be outdoors. He's the only one of our cats that is, and besides the two that we have upstairs. And it really makes you think, because um, I always thought Simba was going to be the, the survivor, um, but it looks like uh, he, didn't, he didn't make it this morning or last night. Uh, very sad. Um, don't even know if I want to post this. Uh, I don't know how to feel about I don't know how to react to it. My biggest concern is not necessarily for uh, for Simba because Simba is uh, is out of pain and she's he's gone. Uh, I'm worried about um, 
Val and uh, Megan because these things always hit them, the both of them hard. Um, I, I'm old enough, I've had enough animals that uh, um, I can deal with these things in a relatively good manner. What I'm going to do to try to, to get through it is just work and I'm going to have to I have the ability to do that. Physical work is the best. So I'm going to work on that wall. Val's got one of the cameras. I've got one of the cameras. Of course, she took the better one. But this one's cool. I still have the remote and stuff, so I can do that. And um, I'm going to try and put this wall back together. So as you've probably seen this wall forever and ever and ever, I, with just these great big gaping holes, Going to, I still have the, the piece that goes there, so I'm just putting it right back. I love using the, the hole cutter because you have a perfect hole that you could just fill with the, the plug that you cut out. So all I really need to do is to cut some strips of wood for the, everything to uh, screw to, attach those, put those back on. Now the ones that are over here that are visible, I'm going to uh, putty and uh, make sure they look pretty, especially the ones that are behind the, the uh, stove. But I'm not going to bother doing that up here because the microwave is going to cover it and uh, the cabinet's going to cover that. I'm putting the plug back up. I'm going to probably tape, but I'm not going to putty because that'd be just an extra step that really isn't necessary. You'll never see it until, uh, until somebody puts in a new kitchen in this house. They won't even know that it's there, except you guys know it's there. You're not telling anybody. I'm telling you right now. So I pulled out my um, table saw, which I don't know if I ever showed you guys. It's always buried. Uh, guess this is the very one that uh, likes blood. So, but uh, we've come to an understanding. Uh, I need to cut some furring strips in order to uh, put the um, drywall uh, sections back in. So I'm going to do all my cuts on the table saw today because it's almost impossible to get to any of my other equipment. So, but uh, it's be pretty breezy, pretty good. Uh, it's 90 degrees out, so I want to do this quickly as possible. Um, it's supposed to hit 102 today, of course, my only day to get work done. It's got to be awful hot. Wow. Uh, three quarter inch, I'm going to cut it at one inch strips. Um, this is a pretty good push tool only if you have narrower pieces because you can't get it all the way to the fence. Um, it, it uses friction and uh, I find that to slip a lot. So just your standard push tools are actually my uh, favorite for doing this. Keeping your fingers away from the blade as much as possible. Um, going to cut a bunch of these and then we're going to pick up the sled and then do some cross cuts. Um, got my safety glasses. Hearing protection. Setting the feds to one inch. Got my push tools. Finally got this thing powered up correctly because it's been giving me some fits. strips and put them into the holes over here. So I'm just going to put it on each edge here so that it has something to screw into and I'll put some screws in on top and bottom and I'll do the same thing on this side. Unfortunately, the stove has to come out.
microwave back up. I still have that dead man that I built. It's been sitting out in the backyard, got raining on a few times, but it should still work. Um, I'm gonna set it up here, make sure our venting is correct because I have a funny feeling it wasn't. And that would be great if we had the microwave up. Then uh, maybe I won't be able to, should be able to get the cabinet up as well. So here's the part where I may kill myself and uh, let a uh, microwave fall on my head. Here's the microwave. It's, uh, it's not a small microwave. It's not a very heavy microwave. But, uh, you know, Bootsy would help if I'd feed her for cheap to get this up because uh, again I'm uh, uh, by myself so it's it's kind of a dead man I'm gonna put a board up against the wall the exact same height as this cabinet and uh, that I could just set the cabinet on top of the board so I could just hold it against there and put the screws back in where they belong so but it has to be exact it cannot be um, off by anything or the screws aren't going to line up uh, ho the hopefully my countertop is level, or that's going to be a problem as well. Okay, I'm at the last part of what I need to do. I've made a little tiny shelf, another little jig, just to put the, the, sh the shelf on top of so that I don't have to try and hold it up. Um, so just set it on top of this, find the holes that uh, I've already pre-drilled when it was up before, and it should go right up. <laughs> let's, let's hope. Shout outs, me, Boomer and Bones. Uh, Val's not feeling up to it. We lost one of our one of our family members today. We lost Simba, 
Um, Simba was one of Megan's cats we brought all the way from New York. Um, we, uh, it's uh, one of those cats that uh, you talk about that's aloof. You can never figure out what he's up to or what's going on in his mind. But uh, we love them like all the others. Um, he's the only cat of all of our cats that uh, was an indoor-outdoor cat. We could not keep him inside. He, uh, he would actually jump off the deck upstairs to get out of the house because uh, he would go stir-crazy. He just couldn't stay in the house. So after a while we stopped trying because we didn't want to see him break a bone jumping off the deck. So um, we always knew his possibility. We live in California. We have coyotes and um, a lot of animals are, are lost to coyotes around here. It's one of the reasons why they want you to have cats that are indoor cats. Uh, because you're just feeding the coyotes in the, around here. So I'm going to put a little memorial up at the end of this vlog for uh, um, for Simba. And um, tomorrow we're going to put up our part three of the ghost vlog. So uh, see you guys later. And here's Simba. Just sleeping right on the couch. All nice and comfy.